Today, I'm gonna to show you what it's like to drive a first-generation Lamborghini Gallardo. Open it up. This car is actually pretty difficult to get in and out of, especially compared to some of the newer supercars. So it's got a turnkey. Great startup noise on this. Notice I've got a passenger that's a girl. He's actually come equipped with one of those. Always, always drive it in sport mode. The reason being is the eager transmission likes to go through clutches like nobody's business. When you put it in sport mode, the clutch uh, engages faster, so it puts less stress uh, and wear on it. It's kind of contrary to what you would think. Uh, but if you put it in uh, normal mode or automatic, it just slips the clutch way too much. I'm in neutral right now. You pull the right paddle to put it in first gear and off we go. So because this is a 2004, you'll notice that one, I have a tape deck right here, and two, kind of a, a crappy layout in terms of the, the dashboard area. The steering wheel is extremely tight. It's looser on the LP560s and even looser still on the new generation Huracan. In terms of driving around town, well, this car is not very good at it. So I wanted to make a video a bit uh, more based on around town driving because there's plenty of information about how great this car is um, out on back roads and on highway stretches. One of the most noticeable things about the car in terms of driving around town is that in order to save clutch life uh, yet again, uh, as you can see this is a reoccurring issue, is you have to put the car in neutral when you come to a stop. So I'm coming up uh, out here to the edge of this driveway and when I come to a stop you pull both paddles to put the car into neutral uh, and then I'll hit the brakes here the reason is if you leave it in first gear it puts unnecessary wear on the clutch so then you put the pull the right paddle and you're off again you don't give it very much gas to start if you give it too much gas uh, the car jerks pretty violently back and forth turning radius terrible uh, I've never driven a uh, cruise ship but it's probably similar to that The car does take a while to warm up actually. Uh, so if you're doing uh, shorter drives or just a quick commute to work or something like that, uh, if you were to drive your Lamborghini to work, um, the car isn't quite up to operating temperature. So you've got to wait a little bit before you can do some spirited runs. That's what this car is all about. You roll down the windows, naturally aspirated V10. Sounds absolutely incredible. This car has no mufflers. Um, I've got tints on this car. So as far as visibility at night, it's not the absolute best. 35% um, in the front, uh, 20s on the side. When you shift at lower RPMs with less gas, the shifts are relatively smooth. Uh, but the more gas you give it uh, and the higher revs that you shift at, the car punches you in the back at a more and more intense degree. Even in uh, sport mode uh, and not in automatic, where you have to upshift the car yourself, if you uh, run into red line 8250 and you don't pull an upshift, uh, the car will bounce off the rev limiter. But when you're doing a downshift, when you're coming to a, a stop, the car will actually shift down itself. It's suggested uh, by owners on the forum the shift at about 3,500 RPMs to. Uh, get the most out of your clutch. A lot of people, the first generation clutches are pretty bad, so after they wear out, they'll go with a Kevlar clutch. It can take a lot more beating and lasts a lot more miles. Cruising on the road, the suspension is pretty hard, um, but I drive this car all the time, so you, you could daily drive it. The issue is the, the turning radius is terrible uh, and visibility isn't great because well, it doesn't have a backup camera or any sort of sensors because it's an old car. Turn the radar on here. Got a Valentine 1 radar detector. Car is starting to get a little bit warmer. <laughs> that was good timing. And I'm being passed by a cop. How funny is that? that right when I turned on my radar, <laughs> the cop is right there. All right, I'm going to mute that. 
if I pull up next to him at the stoplight, I'm probably going to rip this camera off my face so he doesn't want to know what the hell I am doing. The first generation Gallardos have some of the best sounding V10s ever made. It actually sounds better than the 5.2 liter V10s in the LP560s because they made a change to the firing order uh, in the model that came out in 2009. I'll roll down the window a bit. Um, now the gearing in this one, first gear uh, is extremely tall, so I'm in first gear right now, 40 miles an hour, punch it. The shifts in this car is probably what I love most about it, the shifts and the sound. Uh, when you shift at red line, it absolutely thrashes you back into your seat. It's some uh, drama that's lost in the newer generation, the Huracan, which has a double clutch transmission. There's no denying that it's a better transmission. It shifts faster, zero to 60 times are improved and all that. But in terms of excitement factor, there's something about being thrown back into your seat uh, when the shifts happen. Just down shifts in this car. It's absolutely incredible. It's a little bit colder out, it's 37 degrees, and my tires, I'll be honest, are at the end of their life. What's impressive about this car is even 37 degrees with pretty much completely bald uh, Pirelli P0s on it, it does still hook up at full throttle. If it gets a little colder uh, in first gear, it can start sliding, but if you've got fresh meat on it, Michelin Pilot Super Sports, something like that, the car hooks at any RPM. And to me, it makes it a little more fun. It's more reliable acceleration. You know what you're gonna get, uh, and you don't have to worry about spinning the tires. Although there is something uh, to be said about having a little bit more drama in that regard. On the Huracan, if you put it in Corsa mode, uh, it does start to spin the tires at higher RPMs. When you drive this car, uh, you would obviously expect it, but it does get a lot of attention, and it's good and bad. It, it makes my day when uh, you know, a young kid runs up and says, Mom, Dad, look at that, it's a Lamborghini, and points at the car and wants to take a picture of it. That's awesome. That's one of the best parts about uh, owning this car. But the other end of the stick is that people will drive like absolute idiots around you, trying to take pictures uh, and whatnot. My, actually, my favorite thing is when people try to take pictures of you uh, and also not be seen at the same time, like they're afraid that it's not okay that they're taking pictures uh, and they do it kind of stealthy. I think that's funny. And sometimes if someone's behind me taking a picture of the car, I'll roll down my window and take a picture of them and they get a kick out of that. In terms of space in the Gallardo, it's actually pretty roomy. Uh, Eddie's 6'2", over 200 pounds, and he fits great in this car. The same cannot be said for a lot of supercars. So that's good uh, if you're a taller, um, bigger individual you can uh, fit in the car. Obviously, you know, you're getting over 6'6", six, six, something like that. It might be a bit of a, a stretch. A lot of people wonder about uh, attention from police, whether this car is a cop magnet. Now, I don't want to eat my words here and get a ticket five seconds after I say this, um, but it seems to me that in a car like this, uh, cops tend to leave you alone, and if they're going to do anything, uh, it, it's more to take pictures or give you a thumbs up. I've had some of my friends get pulled over uh, in supercars. I've never been pulled over in this car. I've never gotten a ticket uh, in any car ever. But I've had, had some friends get pulled over in supercars and the cop just wanted to tell them, hey, slow down. But by the way, can I get a picture of your car? So it doesn't mean necessarily if you get this car, you're going to be getting speeding tickets left and right. I mean, I will say that obviously it's very fast. So in terms of accelerating all the time, it's... Uh, tempting to want to do that. In terms of attention from like guys versus girls on the road, a lot of people think that if you buy uh, a Lamborghini, you'll get infinite attention from girls, and that's not really the case. It mostly gets attention from guys, pretty much only guys. If you drive by a group of girls, the most likely reaction is either, uh, number one, they don't care at all. Uh, really don't care at all, they don't even notice the car, or uh, you get somebody flipping you off. You get the occasional girl who thinks it's cool, but few and far between, 
it seems like. Uh, guys, anything from holy crap, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen, to I hate you, uh, go die. So, <laughs> kind of the whole gamut of reactions. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to give a perspective of what it's like driving it more in the around town area, less of back roads, um, and do it at nighttime to give uh, even further perspective. Hope you enjoyed this type of video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you next video.